Welcome back. In this video I sort out the trenching for the electrics for this new workshop. So rather than hire a trencher I decided to have a custom bucket made for my excavator. So this is 75 millimeters wide. I had it made so that the tip length was 700 millimeters and it's worked really well and produces this nice narrow trench. So here's the starting point, right in the background there is where the subboard is going to go for the workshop and I've probably done the first 50 metres by this point and here's a bit of a look at how it works. I did a quick how, I think this digs at about 20 to 25 metres per hour so not really sure how that compares to a trench digger and it doesn't really bother me either way because having my own now just means I have the flexibility to use it as I please. and with the luxury of sitting in, in an excavator. So after a few hours, I did this all in one day, I dug all the way up my this hill and, and down the driveway and at this point here, it's getting close, I've probably got about 20 metres to go. And this is for the main power supply that I'm putting in, so I'm going from an overhead supply converting my whole property to underground three phase. I currently have two phase because it's quite an old property. So this will be a three phase supply going to my workshop. Now there's lots of cables and obviously it's very important to make sure you mark everything so you know what's what. Now at this point I've got the trenching done and this is where you really want to think about what pipes you need, what wires, what water, because if you've got a property like this, you only want to do it once. So I've got uh, part of my fire main is this two inch. Deeper down is the water supply from my rainwater system. I've got light duty conduit. I've got heavy duty conduit for power. And then there's a number of cables, which I'm starting to lay out now. So there's aerial cable. Ethernet. This is a uh, data that I need uh, for the solar system that I'm going to put in. Now, this run is nearly 150 meters, so you can't actually run an Ethernet cable like this successfully over about 80 meters. This cable here is a, a different type of cable. It's RS485. This can run, you know, very long distances. So this this will be fine. Uh, the power is obviously going to go at the bottom. I won't go into this too much because you you really should be using a licensed electrician. But this goes at the bottom. I've gone about 700 mil deep just to be sure. You have separation between this and data cables. I'm going to put probably a foot between the, t the two of soil. A bit above that. Then you put marker tape so that if you ever dig again you know that there's power. It's quite a big job, but what would be worse is forgetting a cable and thinking you're going to do it later. So I'll get all these laid and then finally the underground works will be done and I can actually start making progress on the shed itself. So there's the conduit. I've got 50mm conduit, I've got medium duty conduit and 32mm. Uh, for various supplies. This is the main feeder from the main meter board to the workshop. It's three phase. The cable's quite big because uh, that sort of distance you need a bigger cable to make sure you don't have voltage drop. Now I had some great help and the first thing we did was use the excavator to unroll this cable to be sure it was actually the right length. Now that roll of cable weighed nearly 250 kilograms so it did take you know four of us to do this. So we lay it out, again this excavator has just been so useful. Um, once it was laid out, what we did then was started to join the conduit and rather than think you're going to put conduit underground and then pull this massive cable through it, it was much easier to join them and slip the cable through the conduit before putting it underground. So we glued two lengths together which is 8 metres long and between us we just fed them up half from one end so the first 70 meters roughly from this end and then once we got halfway we then reversed it and did the other half from the other end 
So that'll work pretty good. It fit inside that conduit with a bit of uh, clearance, which was handy. So glue them all together because you want to be sure that they're tight and you don't get any water in. Here we are going up from the other end. And this is on the main meter board end. Again, this, this went to plan. There was really no problems whatsoever. I think you like the smell of baby powder, mate. Now this is out the meter box, so we're just feeding this in. You'll see a bit later all the cables that end up at this meter board. Now I've tried to think of everything, so there's quite a few cables going there. Now again, laying this conduit, we wanted to make sure we didn't drop dirt in the hole because it is quite narrow. So again, use the excavator. It worked really well. And we literally laid nearly 150 meters in that hole in probably, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. So that went like clockwork. Now once we had done this one, there was a 32 mil conduit here that I had to run some smaller cables through as another supply. And what I do is just use a string and a vacuum cleaner and it sucks the string up, no problem. I've done that up to 70 metres without a problem. Now this is a bit later on, I've got the power in there, the water main, the data and you can see in the background there where I've backfilled it, compacted it and you wouldn't know that. I've done anything there. This is on the workshop end, just doing the last bit of the main supply, dropping that in. As I said earlier, that's about 700 millimeters deep. I backfill about a foot. These are the data cables in this conduit. I backfill over that conduit and then put this marker tape in. Uh, and the marker tape's probably about less than a foot underground, and the purpose of that is pretty clear is that. If you ever dig there in the future, you'll know that there's a power supply underground. And that's well above the actual power supply. Now here's my cables going to the main meter board. And you can see the main driveway is also backfilled at this point. Mix up some concrete and I need to make a plinth. And that plinth is for my main meter board to rest on. It was quite a hot day this day, so I did a fairly wet mix, just to give myself a bit of time. And you can see that little flexible conduit out the left there, that's for the earth wire, so there's an earth stake that's required at the meter board. And I'll put that in a little bit later. Just spread this around. Obviously I've got this level. Um, I don't think I'm the best concreter in the world, but just took my time and it turned out I was quite happy with this. Put a nice edge, rounded edge on it and at the end couldn't help but mark my name in there. Now once I got that far I used the compactor to compact down anywhere where I had trenches in the workshop area. And then I've got a road base that's probably about six inches thick here to create a nice base for the foundation. And I just level that with the top of my piers, go around, compact it. And this is just the start of getting this prepped for the steel work. So in the next video, I hopefully have finished preparing this, this area with road base and have the metal supplied and finally start building the workshop itself. See you next time.